something's rotten in the state of science. Several things, actually. I've come to think that not talking about it just makes it worse. It makes it look like we've got something to hide. If you mistrust scientists, you're not alone. A recent study by members of the Strategic Council of the US American National Academy of Sciences found that about 80% of those polled say scientists are competent and trustworthy, but the remaining 20% doubt scientists' motives. They doubt that scientists will stick with science when it goes against the scientists' self-interest, like access to grants or other financial support. Did you know that? That as many as 27% of U.S. adults have little or no trust in scientists, at least according to the recent PNAS article that Sabine Hossenfelder refers to, prepared by members of the Strategic Council for Research Excellence, Integrity and Trust. Let me just clarify that I'm not about to criticize Sabine or her content. I follow her YouTube content and I can say that even though I don't 100% agree with all her takes, Sabine has one of the most sound takes on science and science related topics out there on the internet. So I strongly recommend you go and watch all her videos, including the one that I just extracted a piece from. And you will see that it's not about the topic that I'm about to discuss today, but nevertheless, it's great stuff. But yeah, about the scientific distrust. Maybe now with those numbers in mind, we understand why some public scientists share their fears of a supposedly rise in anti-science sentiments without always providing data, or why politicians spend so much time and resources to protect or control the scientific narratives, because after all, science trust is plummeting and we need to do something to protect science and society. But does this all make sense? If you ask me, contrary to the blown up fear mongering in some parts of the internet, my experience and knowledge tells me that it's not too bad after all. But we definitely have stuff to fix, big stuff. So what's rotten in the state of science? Let's return to the PNAS article Sabine referred to. It tells us that 27% of US adults have little or no trust in scientists, a rate that seems to have increased. And this can worry people for good reasons, especially if the framing stops there. It can even create good headlines and sell books. But what does the PNAS article actually show? Here's what it shows. Confidence in science is high relative to nearly all other civic, cultural, and governmental institutions for which data are collected, a conclusion consistent with long-term trends. And regarding the decline in trust, confidence has declined, but the decline is not science-specific. Instead, science's decline is similar to or less pronounced than confidence in many institutions. So immediately the forecast brightens up. Compared with other institutions, trust in medical scientists and scientists in general is among the highest in the US. Only the military scores similarly or slightly better. And as we've discussed before, that's the relative nuanced and context-dependent problem of communication. I can sell you many different images of things depending on how I frame the data. And this is something that we need to pay attention to. When confronted with arguments, we can ask ourselves, can we analyze confidence rates from different perspective? Can we create new questions that bring us closer to the truth? And what can be the most realistic root causes to this trend? For example, do you know which institutions or groups score the highest distrust rates? Well, we have the journalists at a 58% distrust, business leaders at 64% distrust, and elected officials at 75% distrust. These groups represent parts of our systems with massive influential and financial interests in science and its structures. So you can consider the information wars between partisans, US news platforms, or 
their sponsors or pharmaceutical companies lobbying and the links between governments, large businesses and profits, including during the pandemic. I don't know, did the lack of trust in these three groups surprise you by any chance? You can comment down below and let me know. Maybe it took you by surprise completely. But nevertheless, the public seems to have a habit of seeing through dishonesty in the power structures. As a first step to improve science, trust or engagement, we can look into these three groups, journalists, business leaders, politicians, and how they relate to science trust. What can we say about conflicts of interest, for example? So in the grand scheme of things, Sabina is 100% right, in my opinion. The 20 plus or so percents of um, doubt in scientists and science is worrisome. So by now, if you also watched my previous video, the multi-pronged nature of science-related issues and discussions might have become clear. For example, I can sell you many versions of science if I just use vagueness and superficial viewpoints. So I could argue that anti-science sentiments are bad and that dangerous discourse need to be regulated. Or I can keep digging and see from where this distrust and disengagement derives. And usually, usually it's about money. And I'm not talking about the scientist's salary, which is often abysmal, non-existing, or at least very low. I'm talking about big money. But what do I know? I'll discuss this much more in the future after my summer break. But let's just admit that problems like disengagement and distrust in science are far from straightforward to solve or analyze. But that's okay. We expect it to be complex, just as we would expect scientific research to be complex. We just need to take it step by step. So what's rotten in the state of science? Many things, and in particular, conflicts of interest. But we can do something about it. And we can start with how we communicate and engage. See you next time. <laughs>